Before we discuss the concept of God in any religion, first I'd like to make one point clear, that the best and the most authentic way and methodology of understanding any religion is to try and understand what the scripture of the religion has to speak about Almighty God. Trying to understand the concept of God by observing the followers of the religion may not be correct. Because many a time, the followers of the religion themselves do not know what is the correct concept of God. That is the reason the best, the most authentic methodology to understand the concept of God in religion is to try and understand what the sacred scripture of that religion has to speak about God. The most famous amongst the Aryan religions is the Vedic religion that is called as Hinduism. First, we'll discuss the concept of God in Hinduism. When we ask any Hindu that how many gods does he believe in, some will say three, some will say ten, some will say thousand, while others may say 33 crores, 330 million. But when we ask a learned Hindu who is well versed with his Hindu scriptures, he will tell you that Hindus should actually believe and worship only one God. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. The common Hindu believes that everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the human being is God, the snake is God. What we Muslims believe is Everything is God's, G-O-D with an apostrophe S. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the human being belongs to God, the snake belongs to God. So the major difference between the Hindus and the Muslims is the common Hindus say everything is God, we Muslims they say everything is God's, G-O-D with an apostrophe S. The major difference is the apostrophe S. If we can solve this difference of apostrophes, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. How do you do it? As the Quran says, Come to common terms as us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's try and understand what is the concept of God in Hinduism according to the Hindu sacred scriptures. Amongst the Hindu sacred scriptures, one of the sacred scriptures are called as Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad. Chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ikkam evidityam. It's a Sanskrit quotation which means God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Shweta Svatara Upanishad. Chapter number 6, verse number 9. Nachasya kashid janitana chadipa which means of that God, there are no parents, no lords. Almighty God has got no father, he has got no mother, he has got no superior. It's mentioned in the Shweta Shetar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means an image. It means an idol. It means a sculpture. It means a photograph, it means a picture, it means a painting. So Sveta Sveta Rupanisha, chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, Na tasipati asti, of that God, there is no image, there is no idol, there is no statue, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no picture. It's mentioned in the Sveta Sveta Rupanisha, chapter number 4, verse number 20. It says that you cannot see the image of God. The eye cannot comprehend God. And amongst the Hindu scriptures, the most widely read scripture is the Bhagavad Gita. This is the Bhagavad Gita, which is the most popular and most widely read book amongst the Hindu scriptures. It's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20. All those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. And if you read the commentary of Bhagavad Gita by Swami Prabhupada, he mentions the demigod here refers to false gods as well as idols. So it says, all those whose intelligence 
has been stolen by material desires, they worship false gods, they worship idols. It's further mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 10, verse number 3. They know me as the unborn, beginningless, and the supreme lord of all the worlds. <laughs> 